Hi, today in this video, let us discuss about the prostaglandins. Prostaglandins can be classified into different categories like prostaglandin D2, prostaglandin E2, prostaglandin I2, prostaglandin F2, prostaglandin G2, and prostaglandin H2. The last two ones, such as prostaglandin G2 and prostaglandin H2, are cycloendoperoxidase. And apart from these prostaglandins, we also have another mediators like thromboxane A2 which is again derived from the same pathway. Prostaglandins play an important role in our physiological system but therapeutically we can find three types of prostaglandins analog. These are prostaglandins E analogs, prostaglandin F analogs and prostaglandin I analogs. So today in this video let us discuss different types of prostaglandins analogs, how they act and what their clinical uses. Let us start with prostaglandin E analogs. The first drug in prostaglandin E analog is the misoprostol. Misoprostol is prostaglandin E1 analogs. Now let us see how this drug acts. Normally, arachidonic acid, which is C20 fatty acids, which is a primary precursor of prostaglandins and the related compounds, it is present in the cell membrane. Free arachidonic acid is derived and released from the tissue phospholipids by the action of phospholipase A2 through a process which is controlled by the hormones and other stimuli. Arachidonic acid is responsible for the generation of so many types of mediators. These arachidonic acids can be converted into the prostaglandin by one of the important pathway, Cox pathway that is cyclooxygenase pathway and by this pathway arachidonic acid can produce the prostaglandins as well as thromboxane A2 which perform different types of physiological functions. During inflammatory conditions, these prostaglandins are synthesized having few pathological roles. These prostaglandins can produce pain nociception, they increase fever, hyperthermia as well as also induce inflammation. So all these are the pathological roles of the prostaglandins. But at the same time, prostaglandins also have some protective actions in our body. Particularly at the stomach, they decrease gastric acid secretion and increase bicarbonate and mucus secretion. There should always be balance between acid secretion and bicarbonate or mucus secretion. As bicarbonate and mucus secretion are increased, gastric acid secretions can be controlled. So all these three actions are mediated by one of the important prostaglandins PGE1. Now when we use a few of drugs such as NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, they can inhibit this Cox pathway, thereby inhibiting the prostaglandins. As prostaglandins are not synthesized, NSAIDs can reduce pain, fever as well as inflammation. But at the same time, they can also inhibit the protective prostaglandins like PGE1, thereby increase gastric acid secretion. That's why NSAIDs can induce gastric ulcers. Then, how we can treat these gastric ulcers? Because gastric ulcers are produced due to the inhibition of the prostaglandins, we can give drugs externally, which are prostaglandin E1 analogs, such that they can decrease gastric acid productions that produced by NSAIDs. So here is misoprostol, one of the drugs which we already have seen PGE1 analogs. It have dual actions such as increased bicarbonate secretion as well as mucus secretion. At the same time, it can control gastric acid secretion, thereby misoprostol can be used to treat the NSAID-induced gastric ulcers. Apart from this, misoprostol also have another pharmacological action. This drug can also increase uterine contraction, that's why misoprostol can be used to induce labor. So it is a uterine stimulant that can increase uterine contraction. So when this drug is given in first trimester, it can increase uterine contraction thereby produce abortion in pregnant women and that's why misoprostol is combined with another drug such as mifepristone which is anti-progesting. This combination can be used for the medical termination of the pregnancy. So there is three important use of the misoprostol such as for the treatment of NSAID induced gastric ulcers as well as for the induction of labor at third trimester and medical termination of the pregnancy in the first trimester. 
that's why whenever this measure prostol is indicated for onset induced gastric ulcer this drug should not be given to the pregnant woman because it can increase uterine contraction second drug is chemiprost it is also pge1 analogs and again it is used for the uterine contraction and that's why it is also used for the medical termination of the pregnancy third one is dinaprostol it is pge2 analog that is prostaglandin e2 analog it also increases uterine contraction and used for the medical termination of the pregnancy fourth one is alprostadil it is prostaglandin e1 analogs now let us see how this drug acts because it is prostaglandin E analogs, it acts on EP receptors that prostaglandin E receptors, thereby produce relaxation of the smooth muscle and vasodilation. So this alphostadyl can produce relaxation of the trabecular smooth muscles at the erectile tissues as well as increase vasodilation of the cavernosal arteries and because of these two activities, alphostadyl can increase erection of the erectile tissue. That's why this drug can be used in the treatment of erectile dysfunction as well as this drug are also used for the diagnosis of the erectile dysfunction. So when this drug are used for erectile dysfunction, it produces some of the side effects like prolonged election of the penis, painful erection and penile fibrosis can also be observed. However, this alprostadyl can also be used in newborn who suffer patent ductus arteriosus. This is one of the conditions where ductus arteriosus is not closed after birth which results in the leak of the oxygenated blood from the left ventricular into the pulmonary circulation and this backflow can result to increase pressure in the pulmonary system which is not tolerated by the newborn. So in order to maintain this condition before the surgical procedure, alprostadyl can be given because this drug acts as vasodilator thereby reduce pulmonary pressure. Next one is prostaglandin F analogs. One of the drug is carboprost. Pro carboprost is prostaglandin F2 alpha analog. Now let us see how this drug acts. It acts on FP receptors which are receptors for prostaglandin F2 thereby increase the myometrium contraction. Uterine contraction can also be increased by the carboprost. That's why this drug can be used for the medical termination of the pregnancy like mesoprostone and gemiprostone. But apart from this, this carboprost because increased myometrial contraction, it can prevent bleeding after the delivery, so it can produce hemostasis after the delivery. That's why this drug can be used for postpartum hemorrhage because of the increase of the myometrial contraction, and this drug produces some of the side effects which are mainly related with gastrointestinal system. So it can produce a few side effects such as vomiting diarrhea as well as it also produces hyperthermia which is slightly increased of the body temperature other drugs include which are included in prostaglandin f2 analogs includes latanoprost travoprost bimetoprost they act on prostaglandin f2 receptors thereby increase uveous circular outflow which results in increased secretion of the aqueous humor so when aqueous humor is secreted it results in decrease of intraocular pressure that's why these three drugs are used for open anchor glaucoma and they are also used to decrease intraocular pressure associated with ocular hypertension. So these are two important indications of these three drugs. When these three drugs are used, they produce some side effects which are related to the eye such as blurred vision, burning sensation, increased pigmentation of the iris which can also be seen due to these ophthalmic prostaglandins. Next one is prostacycline I analogs. So one the drug is ipoprostinol. It is prostaglandin I2 analog. Now let us see how this drug acts. Ipoprostinol acts as vasodilators. It produces vasodilation by increasing cyclic AMP level as well as this drug also inhibits the platelet aggregation. That's why this drug are used for the pulmonary artery hypertension. It also have few side effects since it acts as vasodilator, it produces vasodilatory side effects. Important side effects are flushing the vasodilatory response. It also produces nausea, vomiting and hypotension. So that's about different types of prostaglandin and their analogs which are therapeutically useful.